The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome on this 19th Sunday of Trinity. Today our Bible reading picks up where last week's left off. And so we're reading from the 22nd chapter of the Gospel according to St Matthew. And we're starting to read at the 15th verse. When the chief priests and Pharisees had heard the parables, they realised that Jesus was speaking about them. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. And he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, it's a tricky one, isn't it? Here we have the uh, Pharisees and the chief priests. They've realised that the parables such as the one Jesus has just told last week, where you may remember the wedding banquet. Jesus said all those who were invited didn't come, so other people were invited. And the others were thrown into the outer darkness and put to death. And here they realise, the chief priests and the Pharisees, that Jesus is talking about them. They have failed to turn up at God's table. And so they go away and start to plot. And they plot even with their enemies, because the Herodians would be the followers of Herod, who was a puppet of the Roman emperor, put in place and maintained there by him, although he himself was of the Jewish nation. And they go back and they try and trap Jesus with a question. Because they know that the crowds hate paying taxes to the occupying power, to the Romans. And yet they know also that Jesus cannot encourage them to break the law without risking all sorts. So they think by asking him this question, they can trap him into either upsetting the crowds or upsetting the authorities. But, but Jesus... Jesus knows what they're doing. Why are you putting me to the test, he says. Show me the coin that you use to pay taxes. Taxes to the Romans had to be paid in Roman coinage, not the local currency. And Roman coinage had the image of the emperor on it. And it also had a verse proclaiming that the emperor was God and of God. So actually, just these coins would have been considered blasphemous to people who worship the true God. And he says, give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, the things perhaps that bear the emperor's image. Get rid of this. Blasphemy is maybe what he's saying. That is what some commentators think. It is difficult, though. To make sense of this because this passage can and has been misused to encourage people who really can't afford it to make payments in taxes and it is easily used to justify overtaxing people especially people occupied by a conquering power and if i'm sure of one thing i'm sure that's that that is not what jesus had in mind It is interesting, though, to consider what 
he does have in mind because he is saying this has someone else's image on it get rid of it but he also says give to God what is God's where do we see the image of God most obviously I believe we see the image of God in each other we are told in the Bible that we are all made in the image of God and so we need to remember that we each other is a sacred offering to God too. But there is something in this passage about money and we can't pretend that there isn't. And I think we need to remember what we owe to God from our resources too. We are exhorted in various places to support those less fortunate than ourselves. Um, in the Gospel according to Matthew, Jesus says, as you did to those who were unfortunate, to those who were in prison, those who had nothing, those who were destitute, the hungry, so you did to me. We are told to look after each other. We are told to make sure that we give to God what is God's due. And so perhaps we should consider ourselves what we do with our time and our resources. It is said that you can tell someone's priorities by a look at their diary and a look at their bank statement. What we do with what we have, and we all have 24 hours in each day and we all have whatever money, um, the world's resources we do have. If we look at what we do with those two things, we can tell what our priorities are. And so I think that this parable or this story rather, because this isn't a parable, this is a conversation. That is what that is encouraging us to do today. Are we doing God's work with all that he has given us? Amen. And so we come to our prayers. And as we have considered resources, Lord, Lord, we pray for those who have precious little. We pray for the, those who would love to give, who would love to help, but just can't. We pray for those who work extremely long hours just trying to make ends meet. And we pray for those who are maybe scared at this time. Maybe they have been made redundant. Maybe their jobs are in jeopardy. Lord, we know that jobs are hard to come by at the moment and we pray for all who are struggling in any way. And we pray also and give thanks for the work of our food banks, for the works of our carers, for the work of our NHS. At this time of rising COVID, we know that there are many who will be called upon to give more than others. Lord, we pray that we may do our part. We pray that we may use our resources in support of the growth of your kingdom on this earth. And Lord, as we pray, we pray especially for those who are suffering today in body, in mind or in spirit. And by name, we are asked to pray for Anne Armstrong, Mary Tragheim, Laura Peachy, John Belk, Michael Smith, Sandra and all the Marshall family, Maylene Smith, the Conway family, Jean Winch, Gillian Watkins, the Danforth family, Caroline and all the Jordan family, Cynthia Davis, Marion Dennis, Chrissy Everett, Sue Petty, Julie Hoffen, Paul Cook, Rosroy and Billy and all the Francis family, and for Catherine and all the Allen family. And Lord, for any whom we individually have a particular concern this day. And Lord, as we remember before you the recently departed, Kingsley Owusu Asari and Ronnie Jordan, Lord, we know that they are safe with you. 
But Lord, we pray for all who are bereaved today, for all who have loved and lost. And we pray that we may all one day look forward with confidence to that time when we will be reunited with our loved ones in you. Amen. Let us pray together as Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and all whom you love, the living and the departed, now and forevermore. Amen.